Thank you, ladies. Let's take our Bibles yeah. this morning to the Gospel of John, chapter 18. John, chapter 18. Thinking of military, I'll share with you a story I've shared before, a little funny. I mean, when I tell you it's funny, you're supposed to lie and laugh here in a moment, so please <laughs> be kind. But uh, uh, a captain in the army had been transferred to another base, uh, and it was his first day there on the base, and they introduced uh, him to the office where he'd be uh, administrating some things, and, and so this is your office in here. And so he went into the office and and shut the door behind him, and he was just in there by himself and uh, kind of getting things organized. And, and after a while, I kind of ran out of things to do, and so he was just kind of sitting around at his desk there and not doing a whole lot in the moment. And at that moment, he heard a, he heard a knock on the door, and he looked out there, and there was a private standing there with some equipment in hand. And uh, the captain quickly wanted to look busy, and so he grabbed the phone, and he put it up to his ear, and he said, come in. And the private walked in, and the captain kind of motioned to him, I'll be with you in just a moment. And he began this pretend conversation with the general. Yes, General. Uh, it is great to be here. Yes, sir, General. We're, we're very, very honored for the opportunity to serve. Yes, General. Well, we would love to have dinner with you and your wife. That would be great. Thank you so much, General. I'll talk to you soon. And he hangs up the phone. And he says, what can I do for you, private? And the private kind of put his head down very sheepishly, and he says, uh, "Sir, I'm uh, I'm here to connect your phone up for service." <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So uh, that's my military uh, joke for you veterans today. But uh, we're at John chapter number 18, and we've been there. We've been in the Gospel of John for some time, over a year. And I want to kind of, I would like to get this done by the end of this year. Uh, through the Gospel of John, um, I have a desire for us to enter a new theme in the, in the new year. You may have seen it on our, our announcements. We're going to have a theme in uh, 2014 of faith and focus. And we're going to be preaching some messages on that and so forth. And so I desire to get done with this uh, by the end of the year. It's eight Sundays. Of course, we have some other things going on between here and there that might limit where we'll be pre preaching from on particular Sundays. But I think we can do this. Uh, today we're going to consider the entire passage of John chapter 18, but really only going to focus at the conclusion of chapter number 18. And we're going to consider this topic today. What is truth? What is truth? Pilate asked that question to Jesus. And in chapter number 18, Jesus has uh, been now uh, led his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane. And while there, uh, his, his betrayal has come to fruition uh, by Judas, and he's taken under arrest. Uh, he is brought before Annas, the former high priest, who probably was running the show, even though he was not the official high priest. He was probably the one that was still kind of calling the shots for the, the Jewish religious system. And then he also stood before Caiaphas, the, the high priest, the, the son-in-law of Annas. And eventually he is brought before Pilate. And, uh, and he, is, he is questioned by Pilate. He is uh, uh, Pilate uh, questions the Jews and so forth. And so we're at very much at the, at the process now of Jesus and his crucifixion is right at hand. In fact, this passage of scripture is when Jesus is scourged. When he is beat with the, those cat of nine tails. And, and so we are very much in the process of, of, the, of the crucifixion and all that took place. And so we're very close to his crucifixion, his, his death, his burial, and then praise the Lord, his resurrection. And uh, I certainly would look forward and we, we believe that very, very much. But what is truth? There was a little boy, he was 12 years old, and he was an important witness in a in a very uh, important lawsuit. And uh, he was very nervous and anxious about being a witness, but nonetheless he was called. And uh, he was being cross-examined by one of the lawyers one day. And the lawyer questioned the young man, this 12-year-old boy, who was certainly trying to intimidate and, and, and make him nervous, trying to get him to mess up, uh, to affect his testimony. And he says, your father's probably been coaching you how to testify, hasn't he? And the young boy said, yes, sir, he has. He goes, uh-huh, that's what I figured. Well, why don't you tell the courts what your father's been telling you? And the 
little boy said, well, my dad told me that you, that the lawyers might try to mess me up. And try, might try to mix me up in my words. But my dad said this. If I just commit to tell the truth, I can say the same thing over and over again. And it will be all right. Hey. Now truth, as we talked a little bit last week, we considered unity. And that unity must always be weighed on the scales of truth. Uh, it, 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 that, that, is our, uh, that is our determining factor of whether we can be unified with somebody. The truth. Tonight we'll, we'll continue our series of I know what I believe, but why do I believe it? And we're considering why are we Baptists? Uh, we started this last week, and tonight we'll talk a little bit more about this point. As Baptists, and, 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 and I should say this in a traditional way, not every Baptist church believes this way, but it right. seems like in times past it had been this way, and perhaps even as a denomination or as a group, Sometimes we're getting away from this, but we here at Capital City Baptist Church believe this. The Bible is our sole authority. Amen. Uh, that's where we that's where we go to find truth is to the scriptures. We don't go and look to traditions, we don't go and look to rituals, we don't go and look to a, a board of men or, or women or anything else. We go to the scriptures. It is our sole authority. Now we have boards, we have men that help with different things, but when they're Opinion contradicts the Word of God. We, we are to rely upon the Word of God. That's our truth. All right. And uh, I want us to, as we look at this passage of Scripture today, uh, as Pilate asked the question, what is truth? I want you to understand, at least in, in part today, what is truth. We certainly couldn't look at all of it today, uh, but uh, uh, what we do share with you, we want you to see where there's truth here for us. We'll begin reading. I've already get surmised what is taking place in the chapter. So let's begin reading in chapter 18, verse 28. It says, Then they led Jesus uh, from Caiaphas into the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat, that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. The saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell thee that it be of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said to him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had this, said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Now I find it interesting here, if that's where that, if that's where that chapter ended, uh, Pilate He's found no fault in him at all. So he's not guilty of what you're accusing him of. But notice what he says there. Verse number 39. But, there's where he gets in trouble, wasn't it? But, but you have a custom that I should release unto you at the Passover, a one unto you at the Passover, will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. If we look at Luke's account of this, we'd also find out that Barabbas was a murderer. Uh, you know, they weren't releasing somebody that uh, had uh, committed a traffic violation of some sort, some minor misdemeanor. We're talking about a hardened criminal. And they would rather see that man released, someone that would put their family and their, uh, their, their, their lives in danger, they'd rather see that man released than Jesus. Hmm. All because they rejected who Jesus said he was. Remember our, our, our theme of John, the Gospel of John? 
That's chapter number 20, verse number 30 and 31. <coughs> Truly, many other things did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Jesus did these things. Jesus claimed these things. And they rejected all of who Jesus was. And so now they want him put to death. They want him to be done. They want to be done with him. Just before his death, as we see here, Jesus stood in a Roman courtroom before this man named Pilate. The witnesses for the prosecution had brought charges against Jesus. And of course, they were false charges. And there was no one to speak on his behalf. It was only a short time before that that Jesus had uh, washed his disciples' feet. Uh, he had told them that he was going away, and that he had uh, gone to the garden of somebody to pray, and then he was betrayed by Judas. And then all those disciples deserted him. They left. Now we know that Peter and John trailed from behind and watched, but Jesus had no one to defend him there. He stood before Pilate by himself. Pilate would hear the charges brought against him and decide the fate of Jesus. Uh, Pilate had to decide what was truth. And then Pilate had to decide what he was going to do with the truth. Now, we can see that Pilate almost, well, he believed him, didn't he? I see nothing wrong with this man. I, I, I see that he's not guilty of these charges. But then what would you do with the truth? Instead of doing probably what he should have done there, he, he, uh, he, he turns it over to them and says, we'll let you do what you want to do. And said, we'll take the murderer, we'll take the robber Barabbas instead. Well, let me ask you today, as we consider these six things I want to share with you today, what will you do with the truth? First of all, I want you to see this. It is true that many people are religious, but do not know Jesus. Many people are religious, but they do not know Jesus. Look at verse Amen. 28. It says there, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas, he's the high priest, and they would be the Jews that have arrested him, under the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves, that's the Jews, went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Here comes one of their rituals, one of their feasts. And, uh, in order, and they did not want to defile themselves by going into this Roman uh, courthouse, into this place. This was right before them. And so therefore we see the religious rituals once again coming into play in the decisions and the choices that they would make. And we can look through the scriptures and see that time and time and time again. Uh, one of my favorite passages of scripture, I don't remember where it's at at the moment, but one of the, my favorite accounts of this is when, when the disciples... Uh, when, the, when the Pharisees uh, brought to Jesus and said uh, they were complaining about the disciples and one of the things they were complaining about they don't wash their hands before they eat and then we talked about the cleanliness and all the rituals that they went through of cleaning their hands and washing their hands and where it come down to is this they were more interested in, in clean hands and forgot about their dirty hearts <laughs> uh, they forgot about their wicked and vile hearts you know what that is? That's religion. Because yes. religion wants you to look good on the outside and is not concerned about the inside. Mm -hmm. And see, when a person has a true, a true faith relationship with Jesus Christ, and that starts from within, it will affect the outside at some point. That, that comes in there and it causes change. And it causes, but it's not up to man, up to religion to change those things. It's what the Lord brings to that person into their time. I can't stand the, the fact that we want to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, make someone look the part without ever affecting the heart. That's religion. That's something we must guard against here at Capital City Baptist Church and our churches of life faith that we're not just interested in the outside, but we want to reach the heart of people. And the only way we can reach the heart of man is through the preaching of God's blessed word. Bringing the gospel to them and letting the gospel affect that individual. Save them. Let them become born again. And then let the word of God and the spirit of God begin to control and to change that person. But it's true. There are many religious people. And they do not know Jesus. It's really tragic, isn't it? 
Amen. I mean, it, it's so close, but so far. I mean, they, they, they say a lot of the right words. They believe in a lot of the same things we do. But yet they've never put their faith in Jesus. How tragic. Remember, we even here recently had the missionaries uh, going to India. And all the many religious gods that they have. And he said, you know what the, the, the struggle they have in India now? Is they present Jesus to them and say, oh, we'll take Jesus too. But they just want to add them to the collection of their gods. They want him to become part of the religious system. And it cannot be that way. Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. It is, it is a very strict, it's a very uh, individual choice that you must choose Jesus and Jesus only. Amen. So many people today want to choose Jesus with their religion and with their works and with their rituals. How tragic. I've shared this story Amen. before, but one time I was knocking on the door and, and a sweet, dear elderly lady came to the door. And uh, I began to talk to this sweet lady. And uh, she came out on her front porch, and I was leaning up against her, her, her railing here, and she was kind of standing there, and she was 90 years old and in wonderful health. And I began to talk with her, and I shared with her who I was. I was a pastor at Fellowship Baptist Church there in Edmondson. She said, I know where you're at. And she goes, I'm a member of this church. I it was St. Mark's right across the road from her, the Catholic Church there. I said, oh, okay. I said, how long have you been a member? She said, all my life. I was born here in Hamilton. I've been a member of this church all of my life. I said, okay. I see, you probably go all the time. She goes, I do. I go every week. And as I began to talk to her, it began, became very clear to me and to her that there was a difference in, our, in what we were trusting in to go to heaven. She believed in heaven just like I did. She believed in God just like I did. She believed in Jesus. But it came right down to it, she was trusting in some works. Some, uh, uh, she was trusting in some of her, 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 her rituals and her traditions through her religion. And I tried to get her to put religion aside. And, and, and I said, I'll put my religion aside. Let's look at the Bible. And as I showed her all the different verses, I showed her the gospel of just trusting Jesus. She said, I'm doing that but I'm also going to do these things. And she talked about her confession. She talked about uh, uh, keeping the, the different things that she would keep in her faith. You know what that is? That's someone that's religious and doesn't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. She was a good lady. She was a very moral lady. She was faithful. But she did not have the truth. And I want to, uh, that, that's a tragic thing today for us. There's religious people all around us here in our town. Uh, we have we have we have some we have some people that are very radical about their faith. We've been we've been uh, uh, we have a, a, a large population of Muslims around us. They're religious, but they don't have the truth. And, and don't let anybody ever convince you of this. You have your religion, we'll have our religion, we'll all just do our own path, and we'll all end up in the same place. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Not Amen. It's not going to happen. It's not biblical. It sounds good. It sounds mushy and wonderful and all those things. But it's not truth. Man. The truth is this. There's only one way to heaven. That's through a faith relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, uh, truth number one. Uh, there are many religious people, but they do not know Jesus. Truth number two this morning. It is true that everything Jesus said... Would happen, did happen. <clears throat> Everything Jesus said would happen, did happen. That's the truth. Look at verse number 32. Look, look at verse 31. Then said Pilate, and then take ye him, judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die, the type of death he would die. Here recently I was speaking, I was witnessing to a lady and I uh, was able to share the gospel with her several times. And one thing she was held up with, she says, she says how, do I, how do we know the Bible's true? And I was able to share with her and, and, I, and I actually just went on the uh, internet and Googled this. Uh, you know, I, I put down, I Googled this, Old Testament prophecies fulfilled in the New Testament. Well, I've got a whole long list of verses that were 
predicted and prophesied in the Old Testament and have been fulfilled in the New Testament. Fulfilled by Jesus, fulfilled in other ways. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. I, I, I had a long list of things. And so today, uh, it, it is true what Jesus said would happen did happen. We have the truth. Amen. Amen. We have that which is correct, that which is right. A young man asked a man one time, how do you know the Bible is true? And the words of Jesus are true. The man told him that Jesus had predicted his death, had predicted his resurrection, and it, all, and it, and it did, uh, did, did come true. He said, if it did not come true, I could throw out everything else that Jesus had to say. He said this, if Jesus said to the waters, peace be still, and the storms continued, I wouldn't have to listen to him. If Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, only to have Lazarus stay in the grave, I wouldn't have to listen to him. If Jesus said, arise, take up thy bed and walk, and the man's legs had remained lifeless, I wouldn't have to listen to him. But the fact is that all these things happen just as Jesus said. So when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, guess what? You better listen to him. It's the truth. Listen, we can count on it because it's true. It's been fulfilled. It's been satisfied. These things that Jesus, he had told his disciples. He had, he had told them time and again, I'm going away. I'm going to die. You're going you're gonna to tear down this temple and in three days I'll rise it up again. Speaking of his death and resurrection. The things Jesus said. But can you imagine if there was just one one portion of scripture where Jesus said to the winds, peace be still, and they didn't listen, well, then could we believe everything he said? But there's not one account like that that you'll find. Everything that Jesus said is truth. We can believe it. Truth number three. It is true that people would rather embrace the darkness of their sin than face a Savior who can forgive their sins. It is true that people would rather embrace the darkness of their sin than face a Savior who can forgive their sin. Look at verse 38. Just Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto them, and unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom that I would release unto you one that uh, wanted to pass over. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Here we see the, uh, the opportunity. He could have embraced Jesus at that moment. He could have said, hey, listen, he, he is right. He is the truth. We can believe him. But he'd rather embrace their darkness or his darkness rather than face a Savior who can forgive their sins. Look back with me to the beginning of the Gospel of John, chapter number 3. John, chapter 3. If you recall in this passage of Scripture, it's, first of all, Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus. And then we have some issues between the disciples of John and this, of John the Baptist and the disciples of Jesus. Notice what it says here in verse number 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only God, the Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. It's a truth, folks. People would rather embrace their darkness, their sin, than face a Savior who can forgive their sin. I've had people tell me, Presented them the gospel. They believed every aspect of it. But they come to that point of decision, commitment. Will you give your life to Jesus? Will you ask Him to save you? Not right now. But why? You believe it all? You know? And they would say this. I'm not ready to let like go of all this. I'd rather hold on to my darkness. I'd rather hold on to these things in my life than to just trust Jesus to forgive me. How tragic. Let me remind you of this. The pleasures of sin are for a, what's that next word? Season. A season. A moment. 
One of the preachers this week, last week, and last Friday said, he emphasized this, that even if you were to live just a, live 100 years, I mean, that would be far above the average of, 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 the, of the normal person, would it not? When we say they lived a long time, not really in, the, in, in comparison to eternity. Really, is that it? Is 100 years much in, in eternity? Not at all. And can you imagine that a person would say, I'd rather have the pleasure to sin for a season, it's just a moment, than to have Jesus Christ. But we have people all the time, every day, that say, I'd rather have that than Jesus. It is a truth today that people embrace their darkness, the darkness of their sin, than rather than face a Savior who can forgive them of their sin. We give you a fourth truth here today. It is true that Jesus is the king of a distant kingdom. He's the king of a distant kingdom. Look at verse 33. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. He called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered and sayest thou this of thyself? Or did others tell it of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew of thy own nation? And the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into this world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus is a king. But he's a king of another kingdom. Jesus said that the servants of his kingdom responded differently than the, than the servant in most kingdoms. So that was the that was the charge that Jews were trying to present. Jesus was claiming to be a king. Well, that would that would rival Caesar. That was breaking the law. And so they were trying to accuse him that he's trying to uh, uh, rival Caesar and become the king of the, uh, uh, of the of the world in that fashion. And Jesus said, "Listen, if that were true, then my servants would rise up and fight for me." Jesus of my kingdom is distant in another time and another place. So this kingdom was based on truth. So I just pause there and think for a moment. Wouldn't it be nice to have a government that was based on truth? <laughs> we wouldn't know what it would have to do. It just seems that even honest men and ladies that go into our government eventually turn dishonest. Mm. That they may have gone there with great intentions and then they become part of the problem. What a, what a wicked world we live in. It's not just the United States of America's government. It's the governments of this world. They're wicked. But all to have a kingdom based on truth. And we do. And the king of that kingdom is King Jesus. Uh, Jesus, his kingdom is come, coming. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And today, if you'll surrender him, let him become the king of your life. Amen. What a wonderful thing that would be to receive him as your Lord and your Savior. We also learn in here that it is true that Jesus was crucified on the tree for you. We have to move ahead to chapter number 19 and we'll, we'll look at this in more depth, but let's look at 19 verse 16. Then, there, then delivered he them therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. We'll study this in more depth. We'll look at this in more detail in the weeks to come. But oh my, what, a, what, what is just about to take place to Jesus? He's already been scourged at this point. He's already been beaten at the beginning of chapter 19. That in itself probably uh, would be more than most men can handle, but it, it did not complete the task. Jesus had said he would be crucified, and so therefore he would be crucified. We've heard the, 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 the teaching of uh, they were beaten 30 with 39 lashes. That, that, that was not true. Jesus was beaten multiple times. They beat them. They were, they were beaten by men that, that were trained to, to take man to the brink of death. 
So whether Jesus was hit with 39 lashes or 100 lashes, he was, he was taken to the point of death. And that beating was there. And then they delivered him to be crucified. It is true, my friends. Jesus died for you. Whether you want to accept it or not, he did. Right. Whether you want to believe it or not, he did. It doesn't change that truth according to the scriptures. He died for you. And he did it all because he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, it's a truth today that Jesus died for you. Let me give you one final thing here today to consider the truth. It is true that when faced with this truth, each individual must either accept or reject the truth. And be willing to face the consequences of their decision. Look with me at one more verse of Matthew Scripture. Look at Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27. And notice verse 34 and 35. They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink, and they crucified him, and parted his garments, caps, and lots, that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and then set upon, uh, uh, over him his head as the accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand, the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and builds it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, all the ships, all the chief priests mocking him with the scribe and the elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. And we will believe him. He trusted in his God. Let him deliver him now. He will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were, with, uh, were, which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. All these people began to make a choice. How would they respond to Jesus? They gambled over his clothing. They mocked him. They jeered him. We read another passage of Scripture. They spat upon him. They smote him. Even the thieves began to rail on him. Now, one of those things changed his mind, didn't it? We see that in the book of Luke. Amen. Mm -hmm. And at some point, he comes, the light comes on, and he says, This man has done nothing wrong. We rightly receive what, we're, what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he looks to Jesus, and in a heart of faith, he says, This, do you remember me today when thou comest into thy kingdom? And Jesus said, This, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. There was a man, there was one individual that 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 that, 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 that took the truth that he had seen that he responded to. And he was saved that day. But it's a truth today that every person must respond. You'll either accept or reject Jesus Christ. You won't stand before Jesus and have any excuse. You won't be able to stand before him and say, well, I wasn't sure, I didn't know, can you give me? No. Today is a day of salvation. Amen. Today is your opportunity. Amen. Today could be our last day here. Amen. Death happens every day. We heard of two tragic situations, one earlier the last week and one, one just last night in a tragic way. But that's not the end of death. It'll happen today. Perhaps even someone we know today will die. Perhaps one of us. It's appointed unto men once to die. You have an appointment one day you will keep. There's another reality. Jesus can come back today. We believe in the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I believe he'll return in the clouds on an event called the rapture. The trump will sound. The Lord shall descend, and those which are alive and remain will be called up together with the Lord after those that have already passed away and come up. We will be resurrected or raptured out of this world. Jack, was it you, Jack, that was saying the other day you thought you saw the rapture taking place on the road? Oh, it was the, the, the sunrise. We told those horns weren't trumpets, those were people as he was looking at that. There you go. But it's going to happen one day, isn't it? Yes, it will. It's going to happen. All right. And it could be today. Yes. And at that moment, whether through death, Romans, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, teaches us that absent from the body is present with the Lord. Amen. Who were they just shared with us at this conference? Was it David Livingston? They found him dead in his hut in Africa, kneeling at his bed, praying he had died. Can you imagine, as the pastor spoke this last weekend, can you imagine talking to God in prayer and then, hey God, this is real. You're here. You know, in that moment from prayer and talking to God to being in His presence, that's reality. When the saint dies, they're immediately in the presence of God. Amen. Or if we come in the rapture, it says it happens in the twinkling of an eye. Amazing. We're there. And we're in the presence of the Lord. And there will be no opportunity for those that have rejected Jesus. And one day you'll stand in a, a judgment called the Great White Throne Judgment. And you will have no excuse that will be valid. And he'll say, I don't see your name. Depart from me. We have cast into the outer darkness into the lake of fire. My friends, today, truth. How will you respond? <clears throat> have you responded well already? <clears throat> I trust today. As I look across here, you know. I see all good people. But goodness won't save me. Right. I, I see people that are, 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 are uh, you know, my friends, people I, I enjoy and, and love and want to get to know better and all the different things. And, but but, I, but I, couldn't, I couldn't get you to heaven. I couldn't, please, don't give him another chance. Lord, please, he did No one can do that. How have you responded to truth? Perhaps you are saved here, you're born again. Would you admit with me time is short? Amen. We have a small window of time to get the gospel out. Mm -hmm. Even just to just look at our own lives. You know, at some point we're going to get to the point where our, where our health will catch up. <clears throat> we can't be as effective as it could be right now of getting the gospel out. All right. We have an opportunity to share the gospel with loved ones. I don't have to ask you to raise hands because it's true of all of us. How many of us have loved ones that don't know Jesus? Whether it be a friend, co worker, a relative, we all have someone that we're probably not certain of their salvation. Listen, we have the truth. Let it affect us in a proper way. As Pilate said, what is truth? I can say this today. Jesus is truth. Amen. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this afternoon.